Hello everyone, and welcome to the 30th Objective C tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how we can use property lists in Objective C. So, property lists are basically a standard way that Apple gives us to write out our object information into XML documents, and then we can save that information and retrieve it later on. So, this goes along with the file reading and writing that we were talking about in the previous tutorial. But this really allows us to store objects into a basically a, a, a document or a text file that we can read back later into our program if we want. And it has it maintains all the structure that we originally had. So for example, if we wanted to uh, write out our NS dictionary, for example, and we had a bunch of keys and values we could easily write that out to a property list and it would save it in the XML format which basically would keep all of the arranged objects that we would have in the NS dictionary. So anyway, I'm just going to show you in this tutorial how we can write out to uh, or from an NS dictionary into this XML file which is basically known as a plist and we are just going to be able to read that and um, that's what this tutorial is on, so reading and writing to plus. So to start out we want to have a place where we can store this document so we can start this out with an NS string and once we've got that just call it path if we want and what we're just going to store it and I talked about a little bit briefly on how uh, the file system works uh, for paths anyway and all we want to do is store this on the main hard drive or the top level. So to do that again, we just use a slash. That now means we're on the very top of our hard drive. And now we're just going to put our file here. So I'm just going to call this my plist.plist. And this is the standard um, extension that Apple uses to denote a plist, which is known as a property list or is a property list in short form. So basically once we have that, now we have our path of where we're going to save this information and now we want to have the information that we're going to save. So what we're going to create here is a NS dictionary that has two different uh, key values I guess you could say. And one key is going to contain an array and then the other is going to just contain a normal string. So what we're going to do here is just set up the array that we're going to throw into this NS dictionary first. So we'll just say array and NS or not NS dictionary, NS array, array with objects. And now we can just say, uh, let's see, what do we want to put this? Well, you guys probably already know what we're going to put in this. Yoda, Samwise, and Darth, as those are the themes that I tend to keep. Anyway, you can throw in anything you want. And now we have both the path and the array. And now let's create the NS dictionary that we want to throw into this plist. So all we have to do again, NS dictionary, and we'll just call this plist. And now we'll just say NS dictionary, dictionary. And what we're going to say here is dictionary with objects and keys, because we're going to put a few things in here. So what we want is actually the first one is going to be our array object that we just created. So let's just say array, and then that's the object. Let's put in the key for that, and we'll just call this uh, my array, or let's say array key. And let's now throw in a string value. So we'll just say some string, and oops, too many commas. Now we'll just create a key for this, of course. So we'll just say string key. So now that we have both of those um, pieces of information, we have our value of the array, which will contain all these elements with its key, array key. And then we also have a string value, which we're attaching to our string key. So now we can easily write this out into our plist, as a, like I showed above, which is this uh, file right here. And all we have to do to do this is say plist, write to file, and you'll notice there's actually write to URL or write to file. Haven't talked about URLs yet, but we'll get into that in a coming tutorial because they are pretty important. But anyway, for now, we're just using NS strings to represent our paths. So we'll say write to file path, 
atomically, yes. And I talked about atomically in the last tutorial as well. So anyway, uh, now that we have that, we can go ahead and run this, and I'll show you what we get. So if you want to go ahead, you can hop over to your finder, go into your Macintosh hard drive where uh, we are storing this, because again, we're using just the slash, which puts it on the top level, and then we're just calling it myplist.plist. So you notice we get the file myplist.plist, and I'm just going to show you what's in it. So you can go ahead and quick look this, or you can double click it, and it, I don't know what it'll open up in, depends what uh, you have for your default. But basically, this is what we get. So this is kind of like a standard XML document, and it looks uh, kind of strange if you haven't, or if you've never looked into this stuff. But it's pretty basic if you've used HTML or anything like that, you know about tags and other things, so uh, you might be familiar with this. But I'm going to briefly go through what all this means. So you can pretty much ignore what the top stuff here is. It uh, basically just gives a bunch of information, the doc type, which is uh, our plist information, etc. It talks about the encoding a little bit here, it just says that we're using UTF-8, doesn't really matter. The main important stuff is from here to here. So you can see we're just using plist version 1, that doesn't really matter, but our information is all stored here. So you can see uh, when we originally did this that we were sending out or we were saying dictionary, you're going to write this to a file. So of course the main piece of information is going to be this dictionary and that's basically on this first level right here. So we have our dictionary and then you can see that it has the keys as well as well as their values that pertain to those keys. So in the dictionary we have the key array key right here and then that array key was pertaining to our array which had the values Yoda, Samwise, and Darth and as you can see each one of these things has its own tag so it has the key tag to represent a dictionary key it has an array to represent an array it has dict to represent a dictionary and string to represent a string as well and you can also put different information into uh, plist as well, you're not limited to uh, strings, arrays, and dictionaries. You can also put in, um, you can put in NS dates if you want to. There's a few other things you can put in which uh, we'll get into in a later tutorial. But for now, uh, this is what you can use. So anyway, back to this, uh, we have a key, which is array key, pertaining to our array of information. So this is the key, this is the value, and as you can see, our array has this information in it. And as you can see, it nicely indents each piece, which you know is contained in another. So the strings are contained in our array, and the keys and values are contained in our dictionary. So it's nicely formatted if you were to look at this. So then you can also see that we have a key right here, which is our string key. And it has, as you can see by the uh, string tags right here, it has the value of some string. So this is simple XML document kind of format, but this is the plist format that Apple uses, and this is uh, especially important if you work with Cocoa applications because you'll have your info.plist, which contains all your main document information. So anyway, that's that, and we'll get out a quick look here. But this is just a basic overview of how you save information in a plist, and you can see that it nicely formats it in an XML format that you can pretty easily read even if you were just to look at this uh, document yourself. So anyway, we have that, that's all nice, and the nice thing of course about saving documents is that you can always read them back at a later time. So for example, if I wanted to read this in, and I'll just create a new NS Dictionary here, so we'll say NS Dictionary, uh, new info, and we will just say NS Dictionary, Dictionary, with contents of file and then of course we have to pass in the path of where this file is located and that will take in all of the XML data that we had in that file and then it will put it into the NS dictionary. So again since this my plist is uh, basically a NS dictionary at heart because that's the information we put in we can easily read the dictionary out of this property list. So with that, we can now read this information in. So that's what we're doing right here, dictionary with contents of file. It will look at that XML document and parse it, 
and basically it will uh, you know, reformat the NS dictionary to contain the keys and the values that we were supposed to have. So if I go ahead and NS log this new dictionary that we have here, I'll just go ahead and NS log new info, and you can see when we run this that we successfully get array key containing our array and our string key containing some string because again we read the information from that property list and uh, by using our dictionary with contents of file method we could read in all that information into our NS dictionary properly formats it or parses it and then we can easily NS log that information so this is a simple overview of how XML documents or property lists work in Objective-C and how we can write information out to them and you're not limited to writing only NS dictionary as well. You can also use NS array to write things to a property list as well. And uh, there's other ways to do this as well, which again we'll get into. But this is again just a simple overview of how you can write to a property list using NS dictionary. And then you can fill that dictionary with different information, uh, more specifically keys and values. And then you can read that information back and do whatever you want with it. I mean, if I wanted to use this new info dictionary and I get a key value, I could easily do that as well. As you can see, when I print or NS log this, we still contain all the information that we originally had in uh, the, the uh, NS dictionary that we originally uh, put into the property list. So that's just uh, my introduction to uh, reading and writing from property lists. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions on this, uh, just leave them in the comments below. And we're going to have a few more tutorials on this uh, reading and writing to file and stuff, etc. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I do apologize for the few tutorials that have been kind of coming out here. Uh, as summer rolls around, I don't exactly have peace and quiet to do these tutorials in, so it is hard for me to actually get things out. But I will try uh, to get a few more out here during the summer months, so stay tuned anyway, and I uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Alright, I'll see you next tutorial.